Hi everyone, my name is Nick and in this video I'm going to talk about SDM, but not from a technical standpoint, rather than business in general. Undoubtedly, things like VXLAN, BGP, APIs are very important, but like any other technology, you should clearly understand why you may need them in the first place. Full-sized clay oven is a great tool, which produces delicious pizza, but do you really want to put it in your kitchen? The same is true with SDN. There are businesses which can and will benefit from implementing SDN solutions, but many companies, especially small and mid-size, won't receive high or any return on investment at all. Which, uh, with that being said, let's move on to the definition of SDN. SDN acronym means Software Defined Network or Networking. Pretty broad statement, right? If you ask 10 network engineers, you will get 11 different answers. So here is mine. SDN is a paradigm or a framework which shifts networking mindset from VLANs, IP addresses, routing protocols to actual applications and services running on top of the infrastructure. It allows you to provide robust, rapid, secure and agile networking resources with the click of a single button at a large scale. Let me point out that SDN is not a standard or a protocol. You can't find RFC which defines SDN and which is used by all the vendors on the market. And SDN doesn't equal open flow. Instead, different vendors use different sets of protocols, like VXLAN and VGRE, different flavors of BGP, OVSDB, OpenFlow, OpFlex, Lisp and many, many more. To build a solution which meets requirements I've mentioned earlier. High availability, high performance, security, agility, scalability and automation. At this point, you may come up with a fair question. Aren't our current networks already robust, rapid, secure, agile and automated? Surely they are, but also there are some questions to be asked and answered in order to understand the degree of these characteristics. So let me ask you a couple of questions. So, let's imagine that you need to open a new branch office. Can you order a new router, ship it directly from your vendor's warehouse to your new branch's location, unpack it, power it on, connect it to the internet, and via a single click configure it completely with LAN, WAN, VPN, security policies, quality of service, and for example policy-based routing. With SDN you can do exactly what I've just described. So that's your new branch opening workflow. Or can you configure a new VLAN and IP subnet inside your DC? only at top of rack switches which have corresponding workloads and propagate this configuration down to your hypervisor level again via a single click. On this slide it means that hardware resources for RAD VMs will be consumed only at top of rack switches which do have RAD VMs directly connected to them. These two switches in the middle, they do not have RAD VMs. As you can see, they have green VMs, yellow VMs, purple VMs, blue VMs, but no red VMs. So it doesn't make any sense deploying red VLAN and red IP subnet on them, since uh, you will just spend hardware resources for nothing. Next case. Can you implement identity-based security so whenever and wherever a user joins your network via wired connection, via Wi-Fi, or via VPN from his home, he gains only those privileges he is allowed, even if his IP addresses changes over time, or even server's IP address has changed. Can you implement firewall rules based on VM's names? implement them at hypervisor level, in the same VLAN, in the same IP subnet, and do not change a thing after VM migrates to another host in the opposite side of your data center, or even to your another data center. 
Frankly speaking, you can do all these things on your own, leveraging either scripting and coding or buying some commercial automation solution. But how many man hours do you need to spend in order to automate devices which understand only SSH and CLI? What's going, uh, who is going to do that job? Network engineers or developers? Do you really expect that commercial solution which can solve this problem will cost reasonable money? Does that solution fit your requirements right now or you need to pay additional bills to develop functionality it lacks? If this question sounds familiar to you and you don't know a suitable answer, in my opinion, you should spend some time on researching SDN market. There are a lot of different solutions right now, and I don't think that we have one giant SDN product for everything. So basically, there are different products for VAN, different products for data centers, and different solutions for campus networking. But let me stress some key features that most of those products have in common. So let's start with single management interface, aka SDN controller. For decades, we managed our networks device by device. If you have a network consisting of 100 switches and you need to upgrade software on them, you have to connect to every single switch separately and execute that upgrade. Or imagine typical troubleshooting session, then you need to identify workloads IP to MAC binding. Find out which switch accommodates that workload and hope that this workload is still there and it hasn't migrated to another hypervisor and physical switch when you are finally ready to execute your show and debug commands. With SDN, you have single management and monitoring interface which allows you to configure, monitor and troubleshoot your network as a whole. You can see all your workloads, their current physical location, their health and health of the applications they actually comprise. Next bullet is open APIs. Non-SDN networks were built for humans to manage them. CLI is a great tool if you are a human being, since output it provides is very comfortable and easy for us to understand and pass. But what if we need computer-to-computer -computer communication and interaction? For example, if you need your network infrastructure and your virtualization infrastructure to work in a coordinated manner, if you want to automatically push changes in your physical network to your virtual environment without talking to virtualization team, you probably need uh, to come up with some common language which both network and virtualization environments understand. Again, it's possible with uh, automating CLI commands, but it has a lot of drawbacks since, since it was initially built with a different intent. The real solution is APIs, which are good for both human-to-computer and computer-to-computer -computer communication, and SDN solutions give the benefit to you. And the final bullet here is automation. This one again is closely related to CLI. There are a lot of different tools for automating CLI-based systems, like Ansible, Python scripts, TCL, Bash, Perl, etc. But they all suffer from the drawback I've already mentioned. CLI is good for humans, not for machines. SDN solutions are built with automation in mind, and capabilities they provide are much more easier, stable, and safer. And in the final part of this video, I want to talk a little bit about how SDN fits into your overall infrastructure. In my opinion, SDN is highly related to cloud concepts, and true cloud really needs SDN in order to provide its services at appropriate speed. Enterprise IT is moving towards cloud-like model. Businesses require IT departments to provide the same kind of experience you can get with AWS, Asia, or Google Cloud Platform, to name a few. They want two clicks to get everything they need. Compute, storage, network, security, operating system, and software. To do that, your IT infrastructure has to work in a coordinated manner. Typically, user initiates the process by selecting an application when he, uh, he needs to deploy. So here is our user. He selects a template from a self-service portal. Here is our self service 
portal. And this portal signals to the orchestrator. Here is our orchestrator that it should start preparing infrastructure. Network, compute, storage, operating system, and finally, application or service. Your network must be able to communicate with the orchestrator at the beginning to accept commands from the orchestrator. And after that, when commands have been executed to report, uh, have been executed to report to the orchestrator, that networking part of the global process is done. For example, VLAN and IP subnet have been created. Then orchestrator can proceed with the remaining steps: create VM, attach it to correct network, deploy operating system, and install software. Without centralized management plane and APIs, it would be very difficult to accomplish. That's why SDN plays a very important role in clouds. Well, that's all I have to say for now. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments or reach me via email. You can find my address in the description. See you in the next video. Bye!